Hey campers, Georgia, back in the man cave. Woot! Checking out another sharp and shiny I just got. This one from Condor Tool and Knife. Let's check it out. This one is the Condor Tool and Knife Nesmic. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure I'll get corrections on that one. <laughs> I'm a foreigner, what can I tell you? Anyway, it comes in the, the regular box with all the warnings and everything you need on that. And inside you have, they always send you a little catalog of their knives. It updates, I've noticed it changes over time. And they always include a sticker. And a little warning here about the knife and how to take care of it. A sheath, and here is the knife right here. And this guy got my attention because I've heard about them. Well, not necessarily this one, but the Nesmic knife. And I don't Nesmic. Anyway, I've heard about it. And it's all to do with the shape of the blade. And you can see it here. It is an unusual shape. This guy from Condor was designed for them by Joe Flowers. And if you don't know who Joe Flowers is, big time outdoor guy, does a lot of writing. He really spends a lot of time down in the, the tropics in South America. Does a lot of bushcraft stuff down there. Very well known for his knives. He does a lot of designs, probably got about 150 out there for different knife manufacturers. Knowledgeable, I'll put a link down to him below there. As usual for Condor, it's really nice. It's well made, very clean, like this handle. Not sure what the wood is. All they say is it's a hard wood. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. And there's that distinct shape, which uh, gives it its name, the Nesmuk. Speaking of Nesmuk, that name comes from a guy by the name of George Washington Sears. And you're wondering, where does the Nesmic come from? Well, back uh, in the late 1800s, he used to do a lot of outdoor stuff, and he wrote a lot of articles for outdoor magazines under the pen name Nesmic. People assumed that he designed the knife. I'm not so sure. I looked it up and read a little bit about the guy. There's no proof to say that he came up with this specific design. The only reason it comes up is that in one of his articles, he has drawings of his three favorite tools he uses in the outdoors. One of them was his knife that he had made specifically for him. And of course, it has this shape on the blade. So hence the name Nesmic. Was he the first? I'm not sure. But it is unusual, so let's have a look-see at this knife. So it is, as you can see by looking down here, it is a full tang knife, which is, for me, a must. I'm not a big fan of uh, rat tails or anything like that. I think, you know, the way I use a knife, I typically like to use a knife as big as this for processing wood, and that means battening it. And makes me nervous when I don't have a full tang. So this is a full tang. The shape of the blade is the, the Nesmic shape. It has a nice full blade cutting edge all the way from here to there. Comes to a nice sharp point. You can see the deep, the deep belly here on the weight forward side of the blade, which gives it that, that weight in the front. This here obviously is to give it a lot more strength on the blade when you're battening. It's giving it all its strength here because you've got this nice deep belly here on the top. And then it's flat over here. The, the grind on this, as you can see, is a Scandi. And if you look at it, uh, it's pretty obvious. Nice, very popular grind, especially in bushcrafting. On the blade here, it says Condor El Salvador. Now, the steel on this blade is 1075 high carbon steel. And that's why they send you this guy with it. 
and what they say here, carbon steel will rust if not properly maintained after every use, clean and wiped down with light rust proofing oil. So you should be doing that with all your knives anyway. Certainly the stainless steel type blades don't really need the oil, but you should be cleaning them up when you're done with them. The blade length from tip to handle, four inches, and the thickness is one eighth of an inch. So it's a nice solid blade. It's, it's really got some weight to it. Like I said, it's very clean. Um, doesn't have a really sharp 90 there. Should be interesting to see if we can strike a ferro rod with it because for me, a knife like this, I'm going to be using it for processing wood and I want to go straight to lighting a fire after processing the wood. And it would be nice to have that sharp 90 on there. We'll see how that does. It's clean. No sticking up parts or anything like that. And unfortunately, I just could not find out what wood this is. It's very nice. It has some nice pattern to it. And then if you look at the handle, it's fairly thin in front and comes really thicker and deeper at the back end and drops off. It feels very nice in my hand. I kind of like that. It's a nice long handle. And the overall length of the knife is eight and three quarter inches. So tip to butt, eight and three quarter inches. The actual blade is four inches. So that gives you about four and a half inch handle, which fits me really nicely with my stubby grubby knife. I really like the way this thing looks. Uh, total weight, 0.53 pounds. And they do say that the, the blade has a satin finish to it and it is very nice. It's a very clean finish. Bushcraft knife, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Not what I'm used to. I do like my bush law that I got from them. This guy here, same people, Scandi Grind, has that spear point and uh, works for me. I, re I use this knife a lot. Very sturdy, strong, perfect for bushcrafting. But people say that the, the Nesmuk is just as good as a bushcraft knife. I suspect that it's more than that. And, I, and I, I'm thinking that this, the shape of this, would come in really handy for skinning game, which, uh, you know, for a, somebody out in the, the woods out there doing survival, bushcraft stuff, you need to be able to skin your game that you're hunting. Um, and I think this, obviously, will do it no problem. That curve on the blade there gives it a nice slicing. And the Scandi grind will be nice and sharp. You should be able to do a good job on the skinning with it. The sheath is a standard sheath and it has the condor label on it here pressed into it and it does say El Salvador on the back here and you can see it slides right in there and it gives you a nice solid it's not going anywhere. Um, nice solid sheath. Real leather well made, stitching's nice, very clean. Condor does that a lot. I, I like their products. They, they are very clean, well made. Can't complain about that. I thought I'd give you a, a quick history tip on Condor tool and knife. Originally, uh, it is a German based company. Back in 1787, they were originally called, excuse my pronunciations on this, and it is Gerb Weisenberg Company, founded in Solingen in Germany. That town is well known for its knife making and especially cutlery, weapons way back then, military stuff. And they did such a good job that they really took off. And as they built and became better, they started building facilities all around the world to supply their their users. They moved to South America to Santa Ana in El Salvador and the name that they gave their company and I'm not sure what it stands for it's I-M-A-C-A-S-A -A -A, which is Amaxia something like that 
my pronunciations, I'm sorry, I'm horrible at this. And they set up the facility. All their facilities were state-of-the-art German uh, production equipment. Later on in 1964, they decided to really have a look at a solid North American market. With that in mind, they formed the new company to supply that market. And that company was called Condor Tool and Knife. So there you go. Quick history of uh, Condor Tool and Knife. Uh, German history. Uh, well known. And they make some nice products. I, you know, I do like their products. I think it's time to go play. <laughs> well, I've been wanting to do this. I really want to see how this works. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to run out to the South 40 back here. Um, it's uh, a pretty nice day today for Minnesota. It's kind of warm. And, and let's give it a test. Dirt time. Whoop! So here we are in uh, the South 40. And I've got uh, some stuff here. I've got my fire making stuff. A couple of pieces of wood. Uh, my gloves. And of course, the Nesmuk knife. Typically when I do dirt time on a knife that I've never used before, I try to do things that I would normally do when outdoors, when I'm going to carry the knife and the tasks I'm going to use it for, because then I know it's going to you know, work for me or not. Let's chop up some wood. I got me some new gloves with my hands. It's really hard to find a pair of gloves that work. So I found these and I want to give them a try. Brand new, out the box. Safety first. So the first thing I want to do is just get all of this off of it. Don't really need this. And you can see it took care of that, no problem. So first thing I want to do is split this piece of wood. So let's get at that. I'll try with my little hammer. Uh, this is a, a really hard piece of wood, but we'll give it a try. Well, I got through that in a hurry. So as you can see, it got through it pretty easy. And this is not a soft piece of wood. It's pretty hard. I'm not sure what it is, but let's see if we can feather with it. <laughs> yeah. No problem there. Not bad. Kind of hard with this hardwood, but it did it no problem. It's a good sign. I think the Scandi grind is perfect for this knife. And you can see the little rosebud there. Works. My next thing that I would use it for would be to make tinder. And I don't know if I can do it with this. Well, you got some tinder here. Unfortunately, I got the wood wet. I want to see if we can strike it. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'll be surprised. Wow. What do I know? These guys know. That worked pretty well. Although I couldn't get the tinder to lighten, that didn't surprise me. Because I dropped the wood in the water. But you got your spark. Well, that was a pleasant surprise to see it strike the ferro rod so well. I didn't realize just how sharp that edge is on here. And you can see the markings there. It didn't damage the blade at all. No burn or chips out of it. The, uh, the edge of the knife is still good. The point, strong. No problem there. So for me, if I'm outdoors and I will need a knife and I have this with me, it'll do all the chores I need. And really, like I said before, the shape of the blade, the Nesmic shape of the blade, with the Scandi grind on it, will work for skinning as well. Hunting, this would be a nice knife to have. I'm impressed. How much did I pay for it? That much. Not bad, not bad at all. And I like this wood handle, it has a beautiful look to it. Well made, clean, sharp blade. The sheath, well made. I would like to have a dangler. I like a dangler sheath, so I'll have to get, uh, find me a dangler to go on this, because I just prefer that. But it is a nice sheath though. Just need that dangler. The Nesmic. Condor tool and knife. Very nicey indeedy. I'm liking this. This could be a favorite. Don't forget now. Like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again soon. Maybe with another sharp and shiny. Maybe something else I need. Got a camping trip coming up that I need to plan. I might need to get some stuff for it that I don't normally use. Just saying. Thanks for watching. And you all be safe out there. Especially with them sharp and shiny things. Take care now.